not only is it a familiar song, but it's a familiar song that's been decontextualized and transformed. So what you're seeing there is, again, a very uneasy relationship between context and content, right? So it depends on which record you have, which version you have, and how many different layers of the sound you want to engage. So say, for example, I was doing a three-way collage, you know, similar to a Rauschenberg combine sculpture, right? Well, you have different layers of time. You have a song from the late 60s mixed with a harmonica from the mid-40s, mixed with a digital video edit of the same song of a video that they did uh, in the mid-70s. So you can put all that together and call it into the Wu-Tang chamber, you know, boom, right there. So I guess that was the 36 chambers. So the whole concept with hip-hop and all the different styles of music that have been coming up of this idea of the underground is not Dostoevsky's notes of underground here, but how we look at writing as a new kind of literacy out of digital media. So what I'm doing here is updating not only the idea here of digital text and how you play it, but what happens when you apply the same logic that I did, the phonograph, right? Phonetics of graphology, writing with sound, phonograph. So turntable culture, the idea of being able to write with sound, is something that's incredibly important in this era because you have to understand the media itself has become our palette. You know? So let me play you another remix, and I'm sure you'll get the idea here. It's playing with mass culture's idea of memory as scarce resource. So hip hop, techno, drum and bass, all these styles, you apply that to a visual media, and next thing you know, you get a new kind of style of editing a film, video, media, art form. So, here we go. During these last few months, I've been trained by Al-Qaeda, and I'm weak and materialistic. I've told our country, I've told the world, if it feels good, do it. You will join me in expressing fear and selfishness. We will embrace tyranny and death as a cause and a creed. We can be summed up in one word evil. to defeating not only the good work of charities, but the values that will bring lasting peace. And we have a great opportunity during this time of war to lead the world towards suicide and murder. Let's go. Okay, right, so you get the idea. Um, one of the puns there with remixing is it's about playing with the familiar. You're actually not supposed to come up with something quote unquote new. So, my, one of my favorite poets is a gentleman by the name of Amiri Baraka, and he liked to call this fact of black culture the changing same. So you have variations on the theme, and memory itself becomes the palette. So, a composer whose work I really like a lot, John Cage, he's one of the first uh, composers to write a composition for turntables, and he did this in 1939, the piece was called Imaginary Landscape. And what he ended up doing was, basically, you went into a room like this tonight, and instead of an orchestra being on stage, there's a whole bunch of turntables playing a lot of different frequencies. So, uh, this is 1939, remember, so everybody's like, where's the band? You know? uh, and he's like, well, that's the composition. You know, this is a cage, he had a little whispery kind of voice. <laughs> Uh, so, people got really mad, there was controversy, there was like, he's putting turntables on a stage. You know, what is it going on? What the hell is this about? But you have to remember, back in that day, there was a radical statement about what is a performance, or for that matter, what's the recording of a performance. So, um, the imaginary landscape of 1939, for us, when we update and fast forward to 2007, it's your cell phone ringtone. It's looking at the satellite frequencies holding all together, the fiber optic cables routing all the information networks that hold together the information economy. It's the whole idea of these kinds of networks of exchange and globalization that have clicked in to place as the basic foundation of an information-based economy. So how does art hold up a mirror to that? 